Look at this wheel. Let's make this wheel in FreeCAD. I went through in a, a, a video that I've already published ways that you can loft spokes like these and I want to go into a practical application of lofting sort of these nerbsy spokes and um, getting kind of a cool result in FreeCAD. So let's get started with this uh, wheel. I'm going to start with a new part and I want to start on the part design workbench. Actually, you know what? How about we do a CSG video? Because I can see how this wheel is very applicable to CSG. Let's do that. And uh, on the top plane, I think that ought to be okay. Let me uh, go try metric. I'm just visualizing how I want this part to be oriented. And I think the top plane is pretty good. All right, so now we are on the top plane. We have the right plane over here and the front plane okay yes I'm visualizing visualizing this correctly I want to make a mounting plate and actually let's go with polyline here just like that all right so we have a closed section um, Let's go with 38.1 here. Let's go with 25.4. I have to go with the... Oh, notice my keyboard monitor down here in case you need to see what hotkeys I'm using. Let's go with 25.4 here. Let's go with 12.7. I'm in millimeters here. And uh, overall, 76.2. Of course, wrong dimension. 76.2, right? We're going to close that. Let's go isometric. And let's do a revolve from the part workbench here. And uh, we want to revolve on the Y axis. So I'm going to move my uh, direction Z down to 0, direction Y up to 1. And there's our nice revolution, right? Um, a lot like how you do it on the uh, part design workbench. Let's make some more features now. I think I'd like to make some spokes, or at least the beginning of a spoke. And uh, from the sketcher workbench, we'll move down. And let's do another sketch on the top plane. Uh, let's go with polyline here. And of course, I can't really see in my solid. So let's remedy that with changing our draw style to wireframe and putting these points together. From here, I can import some points just to make sure that I have stuff I can reference off of here. All right, so that point will work. And I think we have everything we need. Let's go with a horizontal dimension of 6.35 millimeters. And how about we uh, select that point and this point over here, we'll say horizontal. And now we're gonna go with uh, another horizontal dimension, this overall bottom width of the spoke, 28.575 ought to do. And uh, let's, of course I need a vertical dimension. Let's go with 8.89 here and uh, 24.13 here, right? So that should work. I'm gonna close that. I can take my draw style back to as is. We're gonna go to the part workbench. We have our sketch highlighted and we're gonna go with extrude. And let's go with, oh, 30 is just peeking out there, so let's Go a little bit higher. How about something like 51? See where that puts us. We need a little more. 75. Oh, we're getting there now. Ugh, my view is a little bit messed up. There we go. Um, okay, a bit more. Let's go with 81. Perfect. So we've extruded that out. 81 millimeters. And that's looking pretty good to me. Next, I would like to make another sketch. And I want to reference 
uh, my, let me go normal again. I want to reference my sketch off the XY plane. All right, so uh, going back to Sketcher, let's go with the uh, new sketch, XY plane. Okay, now I'm going to immediately close my sketch and uh, highlighting sketch two uh, under map mode. That looks good. Let's go with placement here and uh, we want to place this down the Z axis. So we're going to say position Z. Let's go with 10 times 25.4, so 254 millimeters. And now if I get back into my sketch two, you can see that my origin is now outside of the wheel and that's what we want, right? So I've offset my sketch in the sketcher to be a little bit higher. Let's uh, run into this uh, next sketch, I can uh, click this button here to map normal to my sketch and polyline. I am upside down to the view that I'm used to, but this I think works well also. All right, so we're going to go here, do a small side, large side, done. Now we we'll want to offset that, let's say 50.8 by 50.8 relative to the origin, right? So 50.8. 50.8 and let's do something like uh, here 101.6 as a horizontal dimension we're going to go 12.7 as a vertical dimension and we'll grab 25.4 over here and now what do you know we're fully constrained right that's exactly how we want to be so we're going to close that this is a reference sketch this is not a sketch that we're actually going to be using to define the part, but we do need it for reference. Next, um, I'm going to make a few other parts here. Let's highlight that bottom face, make a sketch. Flat face is phenomenal. I'm going to import my edges here, right? And we're going to grab two lines. Now, if you want to get really technical, you may want to make these slightly different lengths but I think what I'm doing here is going to be just fine. We're going to make these equal. We're going to give a vertical dimension. Let's go with some kind of vertical dimension, maybe 75 millimeters, maybe a bit more. Let's try 112 millimeters, right? So we're going to close that. And I want to do the exact same on this face here. We're going to sketch flat face. So you can kind of see how we're oriented. I want to grab and import this edge here and make the exact same thing. In fact, I would probably do well to import this line as well. We'll grab this point. There I have a vertical relation. I mean, I'm just going to use the E and set those equal. We're going to close that, right? So we've got three lines coming out of there. And that, believe it or not, is what we want. So as in the last video, you if you watched the last video, you know where I'm going with this. Let's grab the draft workbench and uh, let's use a <laughs> Bezier curve and I'm going to grab this point, this point, and this point, right? Let's grab another curve. No, that didn't snap on quite the way I wanted. There we are. One, two, three. That is looking good. You can try additional curves beyond this for more precise fit, but I don't think it'll work with the method that I'm about to use. So I suggest just these three curves. One, two, and three, right? So there's our spoke. We kind of almost have it wireframed in a way. It looks great. Let's uh, head on back to the sketcher. I want to create a sketch here. Flat face is great. Let's go with import edges. And actually, I think I just need to import these two edges, and that's it. So we're going to trace over this with a line. And actually, polyline would be handy here. There to there, to there, to there. 
and I'm going to make a hollow region. A lot of these performance wheels have a hollow region behind the spokes for weight savings. We'll grab a parallel and make sure that this guy is parallel. We'll highlight these two and make sure that we're equal. We'll give this a horizontal dimension. Uh, how about 10 millimeters, right? Just a little modest hollow region there. Um, and then we probably need a uh, defining height. And actually, you know, if we want to have a consistent thickness throughout, which is probably a nice uh, touch for design, we'll just create a little reference here and make sure that that's uh, perpendicular and choose equal, right? So now we have an equal wall thickness all throughout. We still have one degree of freedom. Looks like we need to add a horizontal in there and we're fully defined, right? So we're going to close that. Next, um, I'm not going to make this wheel completely out of the part workbench, so we'll use an add-in as well. Um, also, I'm, I don't like uh, seeing the grid, so let's head to the arch workbench and use that pound button or that hash, I think is what the kids are calling it these days. And we'll head on back to uh, the, the Curve Shapes workbench. If you don't have this workbench, you simply go Tools, Add-on Manager, OK. And then under workbenches, you find curve shapes and install that. Restart FreeCAD and you're good to go. Uh, so let's grab sketch five. You can see I'm toggling the visibility on it. So we know I've got the right sketch. And then I'm going to choose all three of my Bezier curves. And this first wing looking foil button here. And you can see we've created some profiles. Now this defaults to just showing us the sort of wire profiles. Um, but I'm going to hide my sketch and curves now and I can come to the data tab and make sure that my curved array is true for solid and there is a really beautiful uh, loft that I made very very easily just with some curves now I also have the uh, option to not only surface this but change the number of items right this tightens up the precision so if I go with 50 items, you can see just minor dimensional changes uh, that get updated in there. And I think that looks uh, pretty darn good. Uh, if I want to increase the hollow region, I certainly can. Let's jump back into the sketch. I think that's a pretty good idea, actually. Let's go with 8 millimeters and close. And there you can see <laughs> the, uh, th there's kind of a lot of update with that uh, minor change that we've just done. So that looks great. Um, now I want to make another sketch. Um, so if I'm looking left to the part, I want to be sketching on my YZ plane, right? So we're going to go back to the sketcher. Let's make a sketch. Let's choose YZ down here. And there you can see the wheel pretty well. I want to make um, s just a reference line here and start to reference the way that my wheel is going to be behaving. Um, you know, what's my outer diameter, what's my width, and what's my offset, which is measured at the base of this mounting plate here. So vertical dimension, let's say I want to have a 19 inch wheel. I can use that um, reference line as a guide. So we're going to say 19 times 25.4, and I can uh, parenthesis that off and, and say uh, 0 0.5 times, right? And so that will give me the radius of my wheel. So this is the outer, almost like no-go kind of line. Um, how wide do I want it to be? Maybe I'll go with 10 inches, right? 10 times 25.4. And then what's my offset? Uh, what if I made this 80? Uh, maybe, maybe a bit more, right? 100, 120, that, that's all right. So let's go with 120. Um, let me move back into driving. We're going to choose polyline now. And we'll go horizontal for a little ways. We'll come down diagonally. And then uh, horizontal again. Maybe up a little bit. All right. Let me snap on that line. There we go. Actually, I didn't want to snap onto that line, so I'll grab polyline this way. I want to have a lip right at that uh, OD that I'm looking for. So th this might be a wheel profile here. 
and all I need to do is uh, start to constrain this. So we'll grab a vertical dimension, right? Um, 6.35 ought to do it. And let's grab an angle. Ugh. I'm having a hard time with my dimensions tonight. This is not typical. Let's go with an angle of, uh, say, uh, 135. Right, so we're kind of diagonally moving through the spoke. And that usually goes for some interesting views of the spoke, but maybe it'll be a bit shallower. No, 150. That'd look kind of cool. Okay. We'll come over here and 57, right? That's a good number. So that'll work there. Let's go with, uh, whoops, negative 30 apparently. We'll go with another here, maybe 50. So we should have no degrees of freedom on these elements. And then we'll go with an angle, 150 is fine. This will be 40. I'm just kind of making this up as I go, 50. And yeah, I think that we need to have an equal relation right here. And we're fully defined, right? So that's good. Next. This is not to actually um, create the uh, rim definition. I want to use this as a cut, but then I can reference this later to finish up when I create the rim. So we'll give a vertical dimension here. Let's go 200 and we're gonna close, right? So this is the part design, kind of a classic CSG modeling environment. Let's go with on the part workbench, a revolve. And I want to slip my Z down to zero and my Y up to one. Now I can simply select my spoke, select my tool, and do a subtract. And there I have my rim, as it will be, contacting the profile. Uh, so my spoke and my rim contact point is right there. And we have a nice little weight reduction point that I think is relatively realistic. Let me adjust my view here so I can actually see stuff. There we go. Why is this acting so funny? I should not be looking at a section here. There we go. All right, next, let's do some mirrors and arrays. So the first thing on the part design workbench, I can mirror on the YZ plane. And I can do my extrude. So we're gonna mirror that, looks nice. Next, same thing, let's mirror. Uh, we want our cut on the YZ plane. And there we have it, right? So now we have our split kind of five spoke wheel. Let's go with an array, which we'll find on the draft workbench. And I, it looks like I think I can only do one of these at a time. So I'm going to highlight one extrude. Um, and there's my array, right? So notice now I have some patterns that have showed up. But if I change my type to polar, these go away. So we can ignore these uh, values of two. We're gonna make this a value of five and notice it patterns them on an unintended uh, axis. So we're gonna come down here, change our Z to zero and we'll change our Y to one. And uh, we update and it looks exactly how we want to be, right? So we're gonna highlight this and let's do the exact same thing from ortho to polar, we want to have our y be 1, our z be 0, and we want to have our number polar be 5. And we have a full update. Second to the last time, we're going to go polar, we're going to say our axis is 0, 
and one. There we go. And we want five. All right, so there's a uh, one spoke left to pattern. We're going to say here, polar axis is going to be one, Z will be zero. And then our array is going to be five. I'm going to hit the rebuild button and there we go. So we've got that. Next, we did a revolve to uh, cut our part. So let's take a look at our revolve. I think that's actually our original revolve there in the tree. So I'm going to go to my array, find my extrude. Let's see. There's our cut and there's our revolve. And so if I toggle my view, that's the sketch that I want to show. And that of course is on the YZ plane. Let's head on back to the sketcher. Let's go to make an active sketch on the YZ plane. And I think most of the work is done for me here. I'm going to use my edge import tool and import the aspects of the sketch that I've already made. Now, if I was very, very, very detail oriented or very serious about this design, I of course, would use sketch fillets um, instead of sharp edges, which would be more realistic. Um, I'm not going to worry about it here, but I can even add fillets after the fact and have um, a similar or same result. I'm simply following these profiles and I'm making a simple thickness, right? Perfect. So let's make sure that's vertical. Um, I'll add in a horizontal of uh, say 3.125 millimeters. And we're going to say equal between these two. Now let's grab a parallel relation and make sure that we're running parallel here, here, here. Let's go with horizontal. So that's uh, perfect. Now we'll grab between here and here. We're going to say equal. Make sure that we have an equal thickness. That's about an eighth inch thickness. Uh, let's go with a line. All right, and this is just a cheap, easy way to make sure that you have a uniform thickness throughout. We're going to go with equal. And I choose this dot and this line, and we're going to say coincidence, right? And that ensures that I have only one dimension that I can determine the entire uh, the entire thickness of this profile with. Uh, yeah, so we're coincident because we're vertical. Let me just add an equal relation between these guys. And there we go. Same thing. So this goes back to design intent. I just intend on having something that can update very, very quickly and easily. It just takes a slight more effort up front to be able to accomplish. But it's not bad. It's just a few construction lines and constraints. So that's vertical. We simply set an equal relation. Right? And so our degrees of freedom are going to be going down pretty dramatically. I think this will be our very last one. Coincident on both. We'll make sure that we're perpendicular and that we have an equal constraint. Oh, maybe it's not the last one. Let's see. Oh, yep. So we just have to get those points together. Bam. All right. So now we've got a fully defined profile. And I have these imported edges. So if I change back to driving and grab my polyline, right, I just grab all of these edges that have already been drawn out for me by me. All right, now let's close. And uh, with our sketch highlighted, we can run on back to the part workbench 
and do a revolve. We of course want to bump this down to zero and this up to one. And there we have a wheel. Next, I can hide my sketch again. And I'm sure I can hide these sketches down here just to clean up my graphics display window. Uh, from here, there could be a few other dimensions that we're concerned about. And I think we're going to start experiencing, you know, the classic CSG modeling where we create solids and subtract, which is, it feels an antiquated, but it's also kind of a, a nice uh, look back to how CAD used to be. Let's grab um, our sketcher. Flat face on this is fine. And I believe let's let's make a bolt circle, right? And in fact, to to app, well, I think we have our origin for that. So let's wireframe this so we can see the origin. And there's our construction circle. I think four and a half inch diameters is pretty common. So let's uh, open parenthesis four point five uh, times twenty five point four divided by two, right? That should give us a reasonable bolt circle. And then I'll come here. And I actually want to be coincident on both here and my bolt circle. And um, let's do a half inch. Right, so there's half inch radius or one inch diameter to fit your tool in for your lug nuts. That looks good. Okay, that's all I need to do. Let's go back to as is. We've got our sketch highlighted, so we're going to go to part design. Or, I'm sorry, part workbench. I normally work out a part design. So we'll do an extrusion. I'm just going to make this 100 to make sure that we go all the way through. And okay, right? So you can see it looks like I've extruded that as a surface. Let me grab the extrude if we go into the data tab and make sure that's, oh, looks like solid is true. So I haven't seen that before where I can, I guess, it, I guess we're looking at a graphics error. So just make sure solid's true. And I think, yep, we're not, well, we might have a minor graphics error, probably some rounding or something. Let's go with uh, make a cut. Actually, you know what? It's even smarter to go to draft. Let's, with our extrude highlighted, make an array. And as before, on our array, we want to go with um, polar. We want our axis to be 0 and 1. Gosh, I could have made this a lot faster if I just had this on the right axis. And then our or we want to have five, right? Now I can select the array as a whole. So uh, I'm going to choose. Yeah, you know what? I think I need to do some fusions here. So I'm going to choose all of this and my initial revolve up here. We're going to go back to part. I'm going to save this just in case. And then I select my uh, fusion here. And we have a successful fusion. So now I can select my fusion and my array in that order, of course, because the order matters. And now I've done a subtract and I've cut some uh, bolt holes open. You'll see that there are some graphical artifacts as to where those, uh, those were um, before when we did the subtraction. That's a pretty easy fix when you're all done with the wheel. And do this when you're all done, not right now, but when you're all done, if you care about graphical artifacts that don't really mess with anything, um, but if you just want to get rid of them when they're done, then you, um, well, you highlight your cut, part, refine shape, and now it is create a non-parametric body that has all of those artifacts gone, right? So that's what you do. Let's delete that. And I'm going to show here. Uh, next, let's sketch on this, right? So we're going to say sketcher, flat face. I can actually import one of my edges, right? So now I can pull from that center point 
and uh, we want to have say a quarter inch radius right 6.35 millimeters let's uh, close that and back to part extrude right so now we've got the lug nut holes that we're doing and let's do Ten, 10 millimeters might be good, but let's just make sure by saying 100 millimeters. Uh, symmetric's fine. Apply and close, right? So there's our extrude. Next, we'll go to draft. We'll simply make an array of that. We want our array to be polar. We want to have five features. We want our axis to be zero, y to be one, and then We'll choose our cut, choose our array in that order. We'll head to part and subtract. All right, so there's our holes. Next, let's go with a let's go with a chamfer. Right, we'll have a nice chamfer on these. So I choose the surface chamfer uh, instead of one millimeter. Let's try I don't know four and see where that puts us. Okay. Yeah, nice chamfer. So we're going to come over here and uh, edit the edges. And I can just choose from the graphics display an edge from each of these holes and it will propagate properly. Right. Oh, except look, our chamfers are a bit smaller. So let's make sure that that is actually four millimeters. Perfect. Next, um, how about Uh, and just just because we have a nice looking wheel going, let's go with appearance. And I'm going to change this over to chrome. There we go. I have a nice, more of a metallic -y color. I think it's really nice to be working on a good looking part. <laughs> I know that it makes no difference and it even uses your system resources, but nice appearances uh, are sure are refreshing. All right, let's add a fillet here. And just try this to make sure it works. 3.125. It does. Let's edit fillet here. Yep. That propagates. But we're... There we go. That's the right size now. Let's... Come here and here, and we error out there. So I'm going to get rid of my selection right there. All right, so I have 3.125, and let's do the same. Fill it. There we go. Seems like I have to do a little extra step to make sure that they're all the same size, but uh, that fillet came in nicely, and they're shading very nicely as well. They like graphically look nice. I'm not sure what happened to my chrome. Let's just make sure if I select this view appearance. Yeah, we went back to default, so I'm going to persist on looking nice. <laughs> there we go. All right, um, next, we have some remnants here, right? We have these little faces that are left over from the pattern, and we may not want these faces. So there's a cool way that we can do that, um, deal with these. All right, I can choose, like, these two faces. I can choose... You know, I, I can go all of them right now if I want to. Just hold down control and select all the faces. And then we're going to come down here and say D feature. And it analyzes our highlighted faces. 
and it apparently does nothing. So let me try a D feature again, but this time just two. I thought you could do more than one, but no. Oh, I know what it is. There are uh, two sets. So I'd have to defeature that twice, right? I would go, um, yeah, that, that's kind of an interesting thing due to the pattern. But we go uh, here to defeature, right? And we get this little defeatured thing. We come over here, we defeature it again, and then it goes away, right? So you have to defeature everything twice, uh, but there's a, a way to get rid of those. So it may be worth uh, doing that. Um, also, it's probably not the most realistic thing in the world, but I think it looks kind of cool. Uh, if I sketch on this flat face, we'll add in a hexagon type pattern. Oh. And here we can go with something like 30 millimeters is fine, horizontal, or fully defined, right? So we can close that go down to the part, we'll do an extrude, you know, 100 millimeters, symmetric, and then extrude, well, I should choose fillet and extrude, subtract. We've got kind of a cool little uh, cutout there. That's normally circular, though. <laughs> so if I maybe add in one millimeter chamfers all the way around, just as a touch of detail. Uh, so that's that's a wheel. That's probably as far as I'm going to take it. But there's a lot more opportunities for fillets, defeaturing, and other details. You can even add in, you know, a little uh, valve stem up here if you want to. But I think this turned out well for what I did with it. You can download this and my other version uh, at the GrabCat account in the link in the description. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I think it shows that. There's still a lot of uh, relevant features that you have in uh, the part workbench. It is an older part of FreeCAD, but I think it has not um, you know, fallen into obscurity. There's a good reason why we still have it, and it works so well with all of the other people's add-ins and other workbenches that have been made. So again, I hope this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.